Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us again on an episode of the Even Better Podcast. Thank you. This is part of our ongoing mission here at Your Clear Next Step to help us all have even better work days so that together we can co-create better communities. I am joined today with my dear friend, Laura Casal. Laura, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Seneca. I love joining you on this podcast. So much fun. I love it when we get a chance to just sit together and chat. And we are here today talking about empowering women, one of my favorite topics to talk about. And I know it's one of yours as well. So for those of you who haven't had a chance to pause and listen in to Laura and to our conversations before, after this podcast, don't don't stop now. I mean, listen, because you're here. So you don't forget to come back to this. But so listen to this conversation. And then as soon as you're done here, put a pin, give yourself a reminder to come back to the other conversation. Laura and I've had a chance to engage in conversations before. Uh, Laura has been a guest with us before on the Even Better podcast. And we've talked about coaching. We've talked about listening. We've talked about engaging. Laura, I, I've had a chance to connect with Laura. She is a coach. She keeps me connected to my East Coast roots. She is out in Connecticut. And she is part of the Your Clear Next Step Network, has come to us as a coach, as a facilitator of conversations. She and a colleague of her. Christine have launched the Women's Career Mastery Program. And among the things that I love about Laura is her ability to connect with people, to to pause and, and listen and hear where they're coming from and help them see and, and hear what they're saying and what they're understanding, what they're thinking and what they're feeling in the moment and be present and advocate for themselves and just really break through some of the noise. And so many of us get distracted by so much noise that's going on in our worlds right now. And I think one of the things that I've delighted, Laura, about being with you and spending time with you is your ability to just cut through the noise. And I have, I've delighted in that. And I don't, I don't know if you've worked on that professionally, intentionally, or if that's a natural skill of yours, but your ability in, in talent management in leadership development and, and your ability to, to help people unlock their potential. One of the things that I see personally about you that I've noticed about you is that, that you, you cut through the noise and I just find that to be so, so very powerful. And so that's one of the things that I delight in about you. And that I would love for you to help just tell us a little bit about your story, and then we'll get into our topic today. Thank you, Seneca. You're, I'm just in awe of the words. You're, it's always hard to hear about yourself, right? But that, that was, that was really nice. Thank you. And a lot of that right back at you. I, you know, people always tell me I'm calm and I'm listening and I'm, like, like, wh- where does that come from? It comes from growing up in a family business. We were in the restaurant business and it was chaos every day on the kitchen floor, on the dining room floor. <laughs> and you really had to pay attention to what people were telling you, the customers, what they wanted, what your employees needed, what your staff needed, you know, all the things going like chaos all the time. And so, you know, I just learned to be the calm in the middle of that. And it's just carried throughout my life. And I think it's more important now than ever to listen because not everybody's taking the time to listen. So as a coach, as a facilitator, like we really have to listen to what's going on in the room so that we can be present and we can offer, you know, our services or our whatever that that we're there to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. I I am just learning this with the, the time that we spent together. I, I think I had missed the the piece that you had grown up in in the restaurant business. And uh, that's a piece of our history that we share together. And we'll have to swap more stories on that together as well. So you can relate to the chaos. I can absolutely relate to the chaos. That's so fun. So the other, another thing that I appreciate about you is that, and and we'll hear some of it today is in the conversation about empowering women to take the lead for their careers. And you've found a way in cutting through the noise to, to help women be empowered and to help women take 
take the lead for their careers. And I, I want to, I want to pause here and I want to be really intentional because some of our listeners, many of our listeners are women and some of our listeners are not women. And so I want to make sure I always do a, a bit of a pause at the beginning of each episode to make sure that as people are listening, they're like, wait, 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 I, this doesn't apply to me, or this does apply to me. Wait, I, I'm only listening with half an ear. Cause I don't, I don't think this one's for me. So as we think about this, should women be listening? Should men be listening? Should people who are mid-career be listening? People at the end of their career, beginning of their career, people in professional workplaces, people in, in restaurant businesses, people who are at home, who should be listening right now? Who, who is going to be most interested in the conversation that you and I are having right now on empowering women to take the lead for their careers? Well, the things that we're going to discuss and share today apply to everybody, really. It's not male or female. I just focus my business on women because I feel they need a little extra support. But if you're a man listening and you hear what women need, you can help support them in that way. If you're also a man listening and you could use these tips too, everybody can take charge of their own career and should. Like, why not? Why not? I coach men at times in, I hear some of the same things that they, that women say, like they just don't realize that they need to take charge of their career, take the lead. They're often waiting for someone else to provide the guidance or or give them the promotion or tell them where to go next when they have the power all to themselves always. So it's sort of like giving them that green light to say, Hey, you can do this. You can own it. So anybody, and it's good to know if you're just starting in your career, it's good to know later in career, right. That you have the ability to do this. You bet. And it's not specific to corporate world. It's not specific to small business. It's, it's anywhere. This is, this is sort of universal conversation. It's universal. Yeah. I mean, you can choose intentionally to go inside in and out of professional jobs, different jobs, different companies, like that could be part of your plan for your career. Like you want different experiences. When I was early in my career, I didn't plan to leave the family business. I I didn't, but the business, my family decided to retire and sell the business. So I had to find other work. I was kind of forced to go, but you know, you could choose, I could have chose to stay. I could have chose to go. It could have been my choice and how I wanted to live out my career or build my career. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at these four things in particular, four things to empower people to take the lead for their careers. So Mm -hmm. the, the first one that you shared was the idea that it's all about you. So let's pause on that for a second, because that's not one of the things that we say very often. It's in fact, in our communication messages, we we talk about, it's not about you. It's, It's about someone else, but let's talk about focusing on it's all about you. And maybe as you lead into this, let's, let's talk about how this came out of your, and, and how this perhaps ties to your women's career mastery program. Let's, let's talk about, it. it's all about you. What, let's, let's dive in there. Maybe, maybe segue into that with a little bit of intro, but it's all about you as that first one. It's all about you. And oh my gosh, that's really hard for people. Like you want me to focus on me and do what I need to do for my career. I'm busy, right? I've got family obligations. I've got projects I got to get done. I've got to go to the gym. Like I've got all these things you really have. How am I going to find time to focus on me? You know, you just have to realize you can and you you could. You could actually focus on you. And there's many ways to do it. Sometimes we just don't realize that we have that ability to focus on ourselves or we, we don't really take the time to do it. I have just scheduled a session with some friends that I used to work with, a virtual lunch, and we're talking career. So it's not like... I got to go to a class or I got to sign up for something special. It's like I get to be with my friends and have a a virtual session and eat my lunch and talk about careers. Like, what are you doing next? Who do you need to network with? Like, we're going to make fun with it, right? We can, we can have a fun way of getting together and talking about careers. So it's just for some reason, Seneca, it's very uncomfortable for people to do it. They just, especially women put themselves on the back burner and, I, I'd like to change that. I'd like to like just highlight this. I've been listening to it for a really long time and just say, no, ladies, like let's take time for you, even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's a virtual lunch or a coffee chat that you yeah. spend on your career. 
I've been thinking about the professional certification, uh, like one of the certifications that I hold is the project management professional designation. And I'm so grateful that one of my mentors years ago encouraged me to sit for that exam and work on that because I knew that project management was a, a designation that I wanted and I wanted to grow in my project management career. And one of the things that the PMI, Project Management Institute, one of the things that they insist on, if you will, is they insist on the continuing ed credits, right? So every three years, I have to maintain 60, I have to, I have to get 60 continuing ed credits in a three-year cycle. And I remember a period in my life when I thought, oh, what a pain, right? What a, what a hassle, how frustrating, how annoying that is. And, and treating it a bit like a, a burden because it was more of an afterthought. And looking at it now from the perspective of how grateful I am that even through a period where I thought I was too busy, I thought I was too whatever to focus on my own development, to, to know that there was another organization that cared enough about me to help me continue to focus on my own professional development and to, to ma- help me maintain my career because it, it was about me, but they didn't tell me to do it, but they told me if I didn't do it, I couldn't maintain my credential. So Mm -hmm. I still had to do the work, but there was that structure. There was that extra impetus to help me to, to do that. And I'm, man, am I grateful? Yeah. It's the, it's little things like that, that maybe could force us to focus on ourselves and make sure that you're maintaining certifications that you have, or you're pursuing interests that you have, right? Maybe you have all these skills and you want to do something special with them inside work, outside of work. Like you can, you can pursue that and you can plan to pursue it and you can start to work on it for yourself. And you can do that by just maybe setting some short-term goals. I'm going to spend 30 minutes a month on me, right? On you. It's not a lot of time, but 30 minutes a month times 12 months, add it up, right? That's six out. Is that six hours? of time that you spend on yourself, which could be a real gift, even that short of of time. Absolutely. I love it. I remember being in the car with my daughter. She was, my older daughter was probably 10 or 11 and I was taking her to violin lessons along the way. And I had marveled probably one too many times that I wanted to take cello lessons. I wanted to learn to play the cello. And that was something that I I had articulated to her that I wanted to do. And I had apparently articulated it one too many times. And I said, oh, I really wish I could learn. I really wish I had time for cello lessons. I wish I could learn to to take the cello. And she said, (laughs) you know, mom, you're not getting any younger. (laughs) Out of the mouth of the babes, right? So this this moment that this, this child in my car says, it's about you, right? You own your development, set that goal, say it out loud, say it out loud enough that, that you've been heard and then that you do something about it. Right. Right. And you, you know, focus on your strengths too. Like you said, project management is something for you. It was also for me in my career, I was doing project management. And so when I came up against a hurdle for myself, I would use my project management skills and create a project plan Like, this is what I was going to do for myself. So create a project plan for how you're going to take time for yourself. And it can unfold any way that you want it. If you want to learn a new skill, which kind of leads into our next, my next thing is if you want to learn something new, uh, there's so many ways to do it today, right? There's no, nothing stopping us from learning something new, whether you're listening to a podcast on the go, taking a course. I did a LinkedIn learning course during lunch today. (laughs) Like you can, there's so many ways to get learning or or you could, we'll keep talking about this, but there should be no reason to not take the time for yourself for, for anything that you want to pursue. Absolutely. So, so let's talk about that second one. So continuous learning and skill development, obviously given my, given my business, given my industry, given my heart song, right. Given my passion, continuous learning and skill development is, is top of mind for me. Where do you, where do you take this? How do you talk people through this as, as a tip for you? Well, so this is sort of like a superpower, right? If you continue to learn and develop your skills, 
you know, you will continue to grow in your career. More opportunities will come for you. If you stop learning, then the career will come to a stop at some point, especially given today with the pace of technology and the way businesses are changing. So you want to stay on top of what's happening in your field. And oftentimes I hear a lot from women, but also from men, that there's been a bit a change in the business. There's been a reorganization, a manager might have left and they don't know what to do next. The employee doesn't know where to go next. And so again, having a plan for yourself, that first step, it's all about you have a plan, include the learning in that plan. So you don't get hit with those. I don't know what to do in that moment. And it's just, it's just a way to open you up to more opportunities so that when things do change, or if you intentionally decide to take on a new role or a new position, you're ready for it. So it just yeah. opens up so many opportunities for people. I think feeding off of that, I think that that brings two things to mind. One of them is going back to the idea of project management, the, the continuous learning and, and the idea, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but the, the, the original karate kid with the wax on, wax off and the applying skills and, and using them in different places. So project management was a, it's a skill, it's a discipline, it's a thing that I'm good at and that I continue to grow in. And I was able to use it in multiple places. So my love of project management and my love of learning allowed me to go to project management conferences. And as I was growing my project management training and development business, I could go and speak at a project management conference and also attend that conference. So during the day, I was attending the day, I was getting my PDUs or my learning credits I was learning, so I was doing the continuous development. And while I was there, I was networking. So I was building my network. I was teaching, so training, and I was I was building my repertoire of classes that I was teaching and delivering. I was growing my business. So I was I was using that same thing for multiple purposes. It was it was like the IKEA, like using a thing for multiple purposes. And it was great, especially in the early days of my business. I would spend one day at PMI Central Iowa or IIBA Central Iowa, or then I would go into, I had one, several in the East Coast and a couple in the West Coast that I would go. And I would, I would spend that day doing these multiple things all at once. So using that learning and development and also cross-threading it for something else. So at the same time that I was learning and de developing, I was also building my professional network. I was also using it as a chance to, to showcase the skills that I do because I happen to be a trainer. So I would, I would speak at one of those sessions and, and give back to the community and, and teach and, and practice my trade and practice my craft and grow my network in that time. So it was using it for, for multiple purposes. And that became just a really great way to, to marry up the idea of skill development and continuous learning and growing my network kind of all at the same time. And that became just a, a great way to grow a, a business as a, as a public speaker and as a trainer. That's a great example. And I'm sure in some point and somewhere in all of that, you were stepping out of your comfort zone a few times, right? Like speaking at a conference, you know, how do we get from, I know the curriculum, I'm certified, I'm using it every day to speaking at a conference but that's learning too, right? You, you're you stepping out of your comfort zone and like, let me use this thing that I have and take it one step further and do something with it. Yeah. Absolutely. And you said, you said something else there that, that struck me, which was the idea of change. And from a continuous learning standpoint, one of the skills that I, I fervently believe in, and you've uh, you've been a part of our the development of our Changemakers program, and I know you'll be facilitating one of the upcoming sessions here in Changemakers. But one of one of the places where we can all stand to skill up is in our ability to, to to handle change and to be prepared for change and to be able to navigate through change. And I, I was thinking about your your comment there that, okay, something has changed in the business. A, a leader is gone or a department has been perhaps morphed into other departments or the department that I work for is, is being dismantled. It doesn't exist anymore. Or the role that I had is gone. Now what, what do I do? How do I handle that change? 
change preparedness and change readiness and resilience and that ability to be ready for change. That is a skill that we all need to grow. And man, if, if a person is looking for skill to, to prepare before they need it, that is one. Oof, if we can get that ready before we need it, that's, that's a good one to grow in advance. Is, is that, is that something that you recommend or have other supports in or any, uh, any thoughts there? Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've spoken at a conference too, on the skill of resilience. Like how do we bounce back after, or how do we persevere through all the change that's happening. And you really have to be a bit proactive about it. You can't just be passive and wait till the change hits because it's going to hit at some point, right? Change is going to happen. It's inevitable. So being a bit proactive about it and making sure that you've got some of these skills that'll get you through like resilience or networking, another good way of managing through a change. I know Change Makers has so many good ways to work through this and help an organization work through it. It is a very valuable skill for sure. And one that's needed today, like more than ever. Yeah, you bet. Just stay on top of what's happening in your industry, in your profession, in your certifications. And there's, again, so many ways to do that. Whether you like using social media, that's a great way to follow the groups or the organizations online, reading books, listening to podcasts. I think there's over 70,000 podcasts out there. So I'm sure you could find one for, for what you're trying to do. But also the, the networking, like the power of networking. If you can't find it, start talking to people about what you're looking for. They'll help you find it. There's got to be someone out there who can who can help you find it for sure. For sure. So let's move to number three, how to advocate for yourself. And this might tie to, to where we were just coming from, but how to advocate for yourself. Where are you going with that idea, Laura? Where am I going with this? Um, again, uh, like I'm listening to hearing what people are saying and they sort of feel like they're not being heard. And so when it comes to their career needs or their development needs. Um, so I really think that this ability to advocate for yourself, to confidently communicate what your achievements are, what your skills are, what your aspirations are in terms of your career. This is really hard for women. So it's another thing to work on and start talking about. And, you know, a lot of times women don't like to ask for help so it's not really asking for help. It's just advocating for who you are, what you're looking for. And it takes a little confidence. So we might need to build our confidence skills here. And we can talk about some of that. You can also tie in branding. If you know, you're know you someone who's working on their own business, maybe they want to work on their personal branding, their image, um, whatever it is that you're working on. But this advocating for yourself and speaking up for what you need Sometimes it's a challenge for women in general, sometimes for men as well. Also for cultural, like, you know, in certain cultures, people are really shy or they're, you know, just taught not to speak up for themselves. And we're not going to be aggressive about it, but we're going to be assertive about it with, you know, what we bring to the table, what we've been able to accomplish. And we want to be able to speak about that. And it's really hard today. Seneca, it's really hard for people to speak up. So um, that's why I've highlighted this. Yeah. So let, let's talk a little bit about this. So how to advocate for yourself. What we were just, as we were moving into this topic from the second one on continuous learning and development, a, a simple example. So let's took it, let's, let's break some of these. You, you've listed a bunch. Let's, so let's try some examples here. A simple example is um, looking for networking. So Maybe in your organization or looking around, you're looking to network, you're, you're looking for a networking group, you're looking for a professional organization, or you're looking for a, a group to start networking with, or you're looking to network with a person or a, someone who has skills or knowledge or expertise in a particular area. Advocating for yourself may be as simple as asking. It may be as simple as reaching out to your leader or to a colleague or to a trusted friend and say, hey, do you know anyone who, and then finishing the sentence. It could be as simple as that, right? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. It could also be as simple as, hey, I want to learn more about generative AI, right? In my field, I need to start to learn how to use AI and learning and leadership development. LinkedIn. Do a search and reach out to them, send them a note and say, hey, would you like to meet for a coffee chat? Um, here's what I'm trying to do. Can you help me? Can you point me in the right direction? Chances are people want to help and they will jump on a call with you. You may have to wait till it gets scheduled, but they're definitely going to offer you some, some advice or some guidance. It could be that simple too. It's scary though at first. Honestly, you think they're not going to respond to me. Why would they respond to me? But <laughs> they will. I'm there. Like people reach out to me and I respond all the time. It's, it's, I, I, I say, don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to try what's the worst that could happen. They don't respond. Go to the next person. Just keep, just keep trying. Right. Yep. So let's look at some of the other examples that you had. So you mentioned personal branding and personal branding doesn't, it could be for someone who's trying to start a business for themselves. That could be personal branding or business branding. If you're a solopreneur or if you're uh, starting a business or a consulting practice on your own or a coaching practice, for example, but it could be your, your personal brand, um, how you want to be recognized within an organization, within, within a company. You're, uh, do you want to be known as the person who brings brightness to an energy to the conversation? Do you want to be known as the person who says no to everything? Do you want to be the person who offers help and suggestions? Do you want to be the person who is the one who shows up and, and helps? Do you want to be the person who, like, who, who, who has answers and suggestions or who invites others to participate? Who, who is your personal brand? Who, who do you want to be? So uh, do you, in your women's career mastery program, do you guys talk about personal branding and how that shows up even outside of a, a business or a, an enterprise brand, for example? Oh, yeah. And even in the company you work for, right? Like, what do you, like you said, what do you want to be known for? Um, it's all about your, your eminence, right? Like w the brand, like what, if somebody's looking for something, your name comes to mind first, and they're going to reach out to you first. So um, I know a lot of examples of that. Um, it comes down to the values, the integrity, the way that you work, the skills that you have, the investment that you put into the career and the brand that you're trying to build. Like if I want to be known as the best leadership development consultant, I got to show up like that every day. And I have to be prepared with the knowledge and the training and the achievements and the examples. So I step into that role every single day and I, and I become known for that. And I capture all of that in my performance review, making sure that all of those things that point to who I am are known. But again, it's it's really challenging for people. So sometimes you just sit back and think about all that you have achieved in the role you're in right now and start there, like, and be proud of it. Be proud of what you've accomplished. I think one of the other pieces of this goes back to uh, a session that I, I think it was Andy Andrews that I heard speaking a number of years ago, where his point was around the uh, a winning football team. Uh, you can't call yourself a winning football team if you just lost the last 40 games, right? So your your personal brand, mm -hmm. you, you don't get to call yourself a, the a, a person of bright, positive energy if people know you as the one who says no to everything or the person who doesn't show up or the person who complains and is bitter all the time. So it's not just who you want to be, but who are you showing up as? How do others see you and how do you, how do you show up? And in your professional development, what are you doing to do that? So I'm, I'm thinking, and, and maybe I'm conflating ideas here, but when I think about the skills that I want to show up as, and if I want to show up as a, a great business analyst, for example, or I want to show up as a great project manager, or I want to show up as a great leader, or I want to show up as a great um, champion of the arts, or I want to show up as a great uh, community energizer, or I want to show up as a great whatever it is, then as I think about my own learning, my own skill development, my own expertise in those spaces, it's, it's also important to, to not just, it, it is about me, but is it also important to make sure I'm aware of how I'm being perceived by others? Sure. But the, but 
there's also, it's okay to make it about you. It's okay to do that. You know that there's a team behind you. You could recognize the team. You could recognize all that was put into it, but also take the time to advocate for you. What was your contribution to that? It's not bragging. It's just stating a fact. I took the lead on this project. I implemented this for the community. I pulled the team together. Like, it's okay to use the I statement sometimes to advocate for yourself for what you need um, and, and feel proud about what you've accomplished and make sure people hear it, right? Make sure people recognize it. Um, and so sometimes you have to, um, you do have to come across very confident and it can be a challenge, especially for women at times. So you might have to fake the confidence, <laughs> walk in with your head held high, you know, and maybe in your words, you sound really confident, but um, you'll build the confidence over time to advocate for yourself and speak up for what you need. Maybe you want to take a course to help you and help the team. So sp speak up for that. And what is it going to do for you? What is it going to do for the team? And ask for the chance to take the course and maybe how can that evolve? Like if I want to take... Seneca, if I want to take your course, how do I bring that up with my manager? Like, how do I advocate for myself to be able to be in that class? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, um, and I, I a hundred percent agree. I think what I, where I was getting the, the story that's playing in my head is a, and maybe it's a sidetrack or a, a side trail is making sure that as you advocate for yourself and as you stand up for who you are and what you've accomplished, that you stand up for who you are and what you've genuinely accomplished and not make crap up. That's not true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. We have to say that, but we shouldn't have. <laughs> say that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it has to be a fact. It has to be okay. a fact. It's going to be yeah. fact-based, fact-based, fact but based. own it, right? <laughs> yeah. These are not Instagram moments. No, these are like, when you're talking about your career, true facts about what you've accomplished, what you need to accomplish more. You just speak professionally. Okay. <laughs> own it. Like if you've done it, own it, be proud of it. Yes, you did that. You did great things. If you didn't do it, don't, don't own something that somebody else did. True. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. All right. So uh, let's get on to number four, maintaining work-life balance. What, do, what does that mean? Work-life balance. Somebody once told me that work-life balance isn't a noun anymore. It's a verb. I didn't even like putting that together, those two words together, but the, we all we understand what it is, right? We all understand that somehow we have to balance between our work and our personal life. And when those things are out of balance, it's really hard to do your best. It's really hard to show up with that brand that you want to do, right? It's really hard to be productive at work. It's hard to learn, open your mind and learn. So how do you create that balance? How do you make work work for you in a way that keeps harmony in your life? And I don't know, like I coach a lot of women and they often think, I just don't have enough time. Laura, I don't have enough time to do the kids, the cooking. Um, I'm working from home. The dishes are piling up in the sink. I, like I have meeting after meeting after meeting, or I have to, you know, an, an hour commute in, each way into the office. Like whatever it is, there's just never enough time. And so a lot of times my clients are getting creative. So maybe it's not changing something at work or changing work hours, but it's getting a food um, delivery service coming in, like where they send you the food, the meals, and you just, all the ingredients and you prep them. You can put dinner together in 20 minutes and that's it. You're done. Um, so making little swap outs, whether it's at work or at home to just make life a little bit more balanced between, uh, work and home. Yeah. Find, finding those ways where we can simplify the things that, that can be simplified. Right. Right. And I, and you know what, we're really fortunate to be living in a time when we can take time to go for a walk during the day. Maybe you take a break back. You know, I'm going to date myself now, but people used to take breaks to go have a cigarette many times during the day, but now I could take maybe a 10 minute break to go for a walk a few times a 
day, at the end of the day, that's an hour worth of walking for me. That's maybe three miles. So that's a way to get some health into your day. And the, the sit stand desks, I know all our office, we all have sit stand desks. So the ability to, to choose at, at times when you do need to be sitting and, and focus doing something or the time when you can stand, even the, the desks that you can walk or the walking meetings, walk around, have conversations with your colleagues walking, or there are things that we can do now that we couldn't before the, the technology didn't exist that we can walk and talk on our phones. We can have conversations with people that we don't have to we don't have to drive to a different location to meet someone. We can use our phone and FaceTime with them or Zoom or Teams or whatever it is and, and see them face to face and not have gotten on an airplane and lost all those hours instantly. We're, we're in that moment. And now we have the time savings that we could use that time for something else that, that might be more meaningful or productive, which which then does allow us to to balance. Like you said, we can maybe we could put that to something. Right something more interesting. Right. And that also gets back to the change thing, right? Like, let's be adaptable here. Like things might work for a while, but then they might not. Right. And so if something changes at home, you might have to switch the schedule around a little bit. You can advocate for that. Maybe you need to come in an hour later, start an hour later, but you know, if you've built up your brand and you've built up you know, people know who, who you are and trust you for your work. They know you're going to get the work done, right? So be adaptable, realize that, you know, things are going to shift and change, but also advocate for maybe what you might need, right? What you might need to help you to make sure that you could bring your full self to work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we sort of bring this to a close here, we've been talking about four things that help us um, empower people to take the lead for their careers. So we talked about it's all it's all about you, which is really fun. It, it's all about you. Savor that, right? That's like a spa day. It's all about you. The, the idea of continuous learning and skill development, uh, advocating for yourself, sometimes because no one else will and, and because we have to, uh, but, but definitely stepping forward confidently and then maintaining that balance between work and life. As we think about those, what what else? How how do you want to wrap this up? As as you think about tips that you would offer, and um, the for our listeners here, let's let's put a bow on this. How how would you put a bow on this? Yeah. Um. Definitely. Just you know, I'm hereby giving everybody permission to take charge of their career. <laughs> Feel that you can definitely own this. You can become the architect of your professional journey. You can have a say in what ways you like to be obtain learning and development. You can um, volunteer for different things. You can um, aspire to be whatever you want to be and you could pursue that and you could change your mind, right? After maybe 10 years in a, in a career, you could change your mind. Maybe you want to shift into something else. So you can own this really, like really, like feel like you don't have to get caught in the rat race or, you know, in what everybody else is telling you to do. You can create the career and the professional journey that works best for you. Beautiful. So this would not be the even better podcast if I didn't ask you my trademark question, Laura. What's making you even better these days? Oh, what's making me even better these days? Um, I am actually s- stepping into my story every day. So I wake up and, um, you know, we think we all have doubts about things at times. And I was doubting myself a lot. And then I said, no, let me step into my story. I'm here for a reason. And I have to do what I believe I have to do to support women in their careers. And I am a learning and development person, so I want to help people with that. And so I just step into that every morning. And I have a big sign on the wall that says, step into your story every day. (laughs) So that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for being part of our journey here at Your Clear Next Step too, Laura. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. 
So if our listeners wanted to get in touch with you, of course, they can reach out to you through, uh, through us. They can find you at your clear next step. You're one of our featured coaches on uh, our team here at your clear next step. But if they wanted to reach you in another way, is there another way that you would want them to find you? Can they find you on LinkedIn, for example? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, anything else there that you want us to share about you, Laura, as we come to a close? Uh, just sharing that I have a one pager, like a career toolkit to help with all the things we talked about and more with links to a lot of different um, websites, applications that you can use to help you through these four steps. Fantastic. And we'll make that available as a, as a downloadable, as a resource, publish this podcast as well. So look for that in the, in the places as you're listening to this podcast, look for that in the places that you would usually look for those sorts of resources that is officially above my pay grade, but look for those sorts of things in in the places where you would find those. (laughs) You're so much fun. Thank you, Seneca. This was great. Laura, thank you. I appreciate you so much. And to those of you who are listening, thank you so much for joining in. And on behalf of all of us here at Your Clear Next Step, we hope the rest of your day is even better. Today's episode is brought to you by Your Clear Next Step and the Changemaker Certification Program. Would you like to save time by solving the right problem sooner with a realistic and measurable plan? Reduce overwhelm by finding more sustainably productive ways to work? Improve employee morale by creating more positive workdays from within. Stay competitive by tightening your turn or increasing your agility in adapting to changing customer demands. If you said yes to those things, then we have the solution for you. You'll get eight full day virtual sessions over 10 months, plus six hours of one-on-one coaching, eight hours of intentional networking, and eight hours of personal reflection. The growth that we've seen is absolutely unparalleled. Our participants of prior cohorts have remarked about how phenomenal their results have been. Interested in becoming a change maker? Give us a call at 515-442-0545. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better Podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.